So hello and welcome to video 22 of the series. Um, I got a request to have a look, a more in-depth look into thread scope and what all this means, what it displays and all, especially the raw events, what they mean. So uh, let's have a look at that. So let's go to the project. Um, basically, what we do here now is that we just add this, the option the event log for the compilation of the executable, so of the binary itself. Uh, we have specified that we can specify runtime options, which will be handy afterwards. So let's just build it. It should be compiled. It's just the main needs recompiled and to be building. And yeah, that's good. So when we run it now, then we spec specify the event of the, the option minus L, which will uh, write the events to the event log. So this means that uh, events that are happening in the GHC runtime so um, will be written to a binary log file, kind of. And I also specify minus s so that we get some basic statistics. Okay, so let's run this. And I've prepared a file which has 5 million packets inside so that we see that it does something. So just let's do this. We've seen this already, so if we pipe this into the program. And now we see this is running. I'm on the statistics two branch, by the way. Um, we don't have any user interface, it's just that I want to measure the chain itself, as we have done in the performance uh, section. And here we've ended here. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's terminate this. So we have we see that we have received finally uh, five million and a little bit more. This is because uh, if you have frames, um, as I, as I told you, the, the frames are not always filled up, and then there will be idle packets generated. So we have also have fifty thousand idle packets got. So we can switch that in the chain, the removal of the idle packets, so that we don't see this. But for now, I don't care. So we have uh, one hundred ninety-seven, one hundred ninety-seven thousand. Uh, packets per second and 33,000 uh, frames frames per second. Yeah. And what we see here is uh, these are the statistics. So the thing we see we have a 55% uh, productivity, which is not really that good. And uh, the parallel GC work balance is also 29.7%, also not that good. I don't think we can really do much much better but anyway so that's what we see here um and now what we have we have this event log file generated so this is a binary file where the uh, the runtime just writes some information so then let's go let's load this file within thread scope and this will take some fun okay so now we have the file so let's make this a little bit bigger so what we see here is uh, basically we've started the program, then there is long no action, then we started up the server, and this was then the point of connection to the server, and then it runs. Yeah? And um, so um, first of all, we see this Haskell execution context here. So basically, this is uh, the number um, you have. We have now eight of these from zero to seven, and these are uh, basically the number of of operating system threads you ask Haskell to start. Very basic. So um, if it if we specify this minus n switch um, in, in the runtime options, and then a number, this is then the number of Haskell execution contacts that is started. And if you specify only minus n, then um, uh, it takes uh, Haskell requests the number of cores of the system and then generates uh, this number of Haskell execution context. So you can estimate roughly that that normally, if you specify minus n, this corresponds to one core. Yeah, it is not always true. So, for example, well, there are some threads kept for uh, foreign function interface calls, which are safe, uh, not for unsafe, but for safe calls, uh, and so on. But uh, roughly, this is this is about what we have. So you can imagine this is as the cores. And then you have the Haskell threads, which are green threads. So they are uh, user land threads, cooperative threads, which are quite fast and very really lightweight. And they are then uh, scheduled onto these different 
So what we see here is basically the two of the cores or two of the operating system threads uh, are busy and the rest does not much. Yeah. So we have these regular things here. This is most probably the statistics thread. Uh, this one, I'm not quite sure. And um, so if you remember, this is the schematic of the threads that we have running here. So we have this main thread, it's, it's actually not the main thread, but let's call it for that now, uh, which connects via a network socket to the server, and then we get the data, and then we have the switcher and it spreads it to the virtual channels. As we have only one virtual channel, it should be expected that only two threads, namely the main thread and one of the virtual channels is active. And basically that is what we see here. So we can zoom in. And then we see, let's say, a, such a section, for example. So you see, we have one thread that is partially active and one thread that is a little bit more active. And you only have the thread IDs, so numbers 15 and 16. So actually, we don't know what this is. Then we have this um, uh, the activity graph here. So this uh, each, each line is, is one of the cores, so uh, or has got execution context. So we see that uh, when they are both active, then we have two, and then it's, otherwise we have one. Yeah. Okay. So um, actually, we only have these numbers here, so this is a little bit uh, um, not so nice for, from thread scope, but um, we can find out what threads these are. So we'll show this then in the next thing. Um, we have um, then some some tabs here. So for the time, for the heap, um, the spark sizes, we, we don't have sparks, we don't use parallel processing here, we just use concurrent processing. And then we have the raw events. Yeah. And basically it's quite simple what they mean. So for example, if you click somewhere here, then the line will jump to where you are currently. Yeah. So in the moment we are here, um, this is just a statistic measurement. Um, all caps stopped for GC, so this means uh, everything is stopped. So that the, the garbage collect for the garbage collection. Um, at this point in time, so let's zoom in a little bit further. Maybe ah, uh, we don't see that much. There's not that much difference. Maybe we can have a, a look at other ones. So yeah, here we have, for example, this is a garbage collection pause. So if you have this this lower bar here, this is normal thread execution. This is the garbage collection itself. Yeah. So you have here garbage collection working, garbage collection idle, then it's waiting for something. Then here is the garbage collection done, and then idle, done, done, done. Yeah. And then the, the execution is of this thread is then somewhere started. So 16. Let's have a look. Uh, first, there is, uh, yeah, 16. Here it is, running thread 16. So at this point in time, uh, so these are the seconds, uh, the thread 16 is started again. Uh, and then there are some statistics and then also uh, thread 15 somewhere gets up. Um, do we have another thread 16 here? There is another, so, so if you read this, so this, this, this bar here is a thread wake up. Yeah, so the thread got woken up and here it gets woken up and here it gets, gets woken up. And um, this is maybe or most probably because of SDM transactions. <laughs> so, for example, let's go here and you see thread 15 waking up. You see the thread is woken up, but it doesn't do anything. So its condition was not fulfilled when it, it was probably waiting on a, on a TBQ, which we had, and its condition was not fulfilled. So it is still waiting. It's again here it is woken up and then it is running. So there was something probably in the queue and it, it got it for, for uh, working. So here we see stopping thread 15 blocked in SDM retry. So this means it is again blocked on an SDM transaction. It waits until something happens. And here the same. So uh, basically the thread does a little bit and then it is blocked on SDM. Then there is some time where it does nothing. And it does a little bit and then there's waiting and then it does here uh, for execution for a longer time period and so on. So uh, while we see that thread 16 is basically running through, just 
there are pauses for the garbage collector. Yeah. And if you look like this, so, so you see uh, it's running through basically most of the time just waiting for garbage collection. Uh, these are the, the only pauses and the, the other thread is then um, waiting on STM transaction. So, so this thread is does the most processing and this one is basically a little bit throttled down by this thread. Yeah. So the thing what we notice is we don't know which thread is which. And the second thing is we have a lot of garbage collection things as you see here. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you zoom out here, you have a lot of these garbage collection events. So this is not good. Uh, for example, here we have long pauses and then just little actions, long pause and so on. So um, let's see what we can do about this. So basically this, this event clock tells you um, when the thread is paused, when it is wake up, when it uh, waits for some STM transaction. Then here we have, um, where is it? There's an heap overflow, so possibly this means, okay, uh, we, we, we want to allocate more than we have, so let's do a garbage collection. And this is in fact what happens here. So garbage collection is triggered with this. And then here just the garbage collection is started. Yeah, requesting parallel garbage collection and then the garbage collection is started and then processed and then the program continues. So we have these pauses. And uh, here, here, for example, we have a longer pause again. Um, yeah. So the first thing is we want to find out then these, which thread threads are these. So we can do this if we go into the code and um, in GHC cons, which is an internal uh, module, you can, uh, there's this function label thread. So you can give a thread the name. You give a thread, you give this function the thread ID and the name, and then the thread will have the name. Which is good. This the thing is that thread scope doesn't display the names. It, does, it still does only display the numbers. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate, but we can walk work around this a little bit so that we can can find this. So let's do that. Uh, and where do we get this thread ID? So there is a function my thread ID which delivers this for, for the current thread. So let's start with this. So again, we are here in main. Uh, with the options processing and before we go into this processing let's just set the name of the of the uh, main thread so this is my thread id and then label thread uh, we will have to do this lift io because this is an io function and we are in rio uh, actually here not rio is started here so maybe we don't need it here did and the name is the main thread Right, so let's copy this. Uh, let's see if we get this. Ah, okay, yeah, and we have to. My thread ID. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, this is also present in Rio, so we don't want from GHC cons, we don't want my thread ID, but we want label. Right. Okay. So this compiles. Do we have another thread here? So we have the, the statistics thread. So just na let's name this also. Uh, we have already copied that. So, but here we need a lift IO. And this is the statistics thread. So let's copy this. And what we do here is we call run chains. So let's go into the chains source file and see what run chains does. This is run in CTRS chain, the switch uh, run chains, here we are. So what run chains does, it comes here and then it, it, it calls two threads which are racing and this one also spawns then for each virtual chain, for each virtual channel a chain uh, in another thread. So. We have this run vc chain function. So let's also do for each of these virtual channels uh, label thread did um, statistics. This is virtual channel. And let's 
uh, show the virtual channel ID. And then we have not in scope, of course. Yeah. So we do import THC cons. Right. Okay, that's good. We have done this for each of these threads. So we do this for this NCTRS chain. That's here. This is the NCTRS thread. Oh, maybe actually we should do this inside here. The thing is, this run general TCP client connects to the uh, to the socket, and then uh, does it create a new thread or not? I, I'm not sure. Just let, let's put it here. So we'll see. <clears throat> um, yeah. Do we have something else? So let's search for async. We have the start thread, which we already have. Race. Yeah, that's we we have already that, and concurrently. Oh, um, we have for concurrently nothing other. Yeah, okay. And only this one. Okay, so we should be good. So let's see. Let's compile this. Let's close thread scope. And while this compiles, let's already start the server. And let's start it again. Yeah, now we should be running. Okay, and we're done. Okay, similar numbers to before. Of course, we haven't changed much. So we see this is 66 megabytes, so this is not that, that small. Um, let's have a look. So in fact, it looks very similar to before. Yeah, so nothing has changed. And we still have these two threads working most 15 and 16. We don't know these numbers. So how to get which thread this is? Well, let's just run this and continue to run this in the background. There is a program called GHC events show. And then we give it again the event log, and then we pipe this to the file.txt. So this converts the binary file to a readable file. It also takes a little bit, 66 megabytes. Yeah, okay. And then we open this in a text editor. And it says 173 megabytes, really open, yes. Okay, and then we see search for thread 15. Thread 15, thread 15 actually has. Yeah, and we see thread 15. Thread 15 has label NCTRS. So this is our NCTRS thread. So this is the reception thread from the socket. So let's have a look. So this means that the reception thread, it receives the data from the socket, converts it to extract the telemetry frame out of it, and then depending on the virtual channel, passes it down to the other chains. So, and this doesn't do that much. So it waits a lot of the time. This could be either because it waits on the socket or it waits on the, on the SDM. And I think it waits on the SDM most of the time. And then let's see what thread 16 is. Let's go back here. Thread 16 has, and this is virtual channel zero. And this is exactly what we expect. So this is the processing from the virtual channel zero. So uh, extracting, make a gap check on the frames, then extract the packets out of the chains of the frames uh, and then process the packets. So to uh, do, do packet passing if, and see if it can find some parameters inside. And this is the thread which does most of the work. Okay, so that's that's quite cool. Now we know what's going on a little bit. So it's unfortunate. Maybe maybe somebody could add this. That the thread scope will actually print here the labels of the threads. This this would be a real cool thing. Um, yeah. 
and we can't hope for more performance because we have only these two friends which really work and yeah but what we can have a look at is this this garbage collector so this is happens quite often and always breaks the whole process down stops it performs the garbage collection and then restarts everything so um what can we do well we have these options for for ghc which we can pass in and this is the garbage collector options and the first try i just want to do one try to make it not too long that we set the size of the allocation area uh, and also within the allocation area we can set this option which divides the allocation area into chunks of the specified size yeah and you can this option is only useful when running in parallel what we do we allows the processor cost to make better use of the available allocation area even when cores are allocated at different rates and here is an example um the full in conjunctions are a 64 megabytes and n 4 megabytes so actually just let's copy that and let's try that so let's close credits so we remember this a little bit and um actually did we have yeah so 54 percent and 86 uh, so 54 percent productivity of the user and 86 percent of total elapsed okay so let's run it again this time uh, with this garbage collector settings again let's start the server first let's run it so five million pickets we are done and now look at this productivity 95 percent of total use and 99 of, of total lapse time that's an improvement right so the the parallel gc work balance is it got down but basically the productivity got up so that's that's nice so let's also have a look if we see here something if we have 255 and 43,000. do we have that still here yeah and we have 199 and 33 so we are we are faster yeah and quite a bit faster so again we have um a new event log so let's have a look and you see there is much much less garbage collection happening here yeah so we got a lot faster and have more productivity and we have less garbage collections so i would say this is a good setting of course now the executable needs more ram yeah but um if this is not a concern you can find a balance here I mean, the speed was was really um, more than enough than uh, in in the version without uh, tuning the garbage collector. But with this, we see perfect. Yeah. So if we zoom in, we see again the same pattern, but with less garbage collection pauses. And that's why it's faster, a lot faster. So this is this is quite some cool thing. Um, there's all there are also some other tools like event log to HTML, which I don't want to cover here, but we have also GHC events analyze. And the question is, I'm not sure if it will work because um, for some for most of my executables, it, gen it generates too big files. So let's just try to call it. Ah, yeah, so we have a, a, the totals is in text form are already there. Yes, and then it generates an SVG in the text file. So let's let's have a look at the SVG file. So let's open a new thing. And uh, where is it? Timed SVG. And that's what we get. And the cool thing is with GG events analyze is that it tells us the thread numbers. Uh, the, the the thread labels the names of the threads so we have here what we see is that the, the most of the time the vc0 is active and the nctrs thread is a little bit lighter yeah and the garbage collection is not too heavy actually and then we can also see across the whole runtime of the program what is happening and this is the end so this is also quite cool works done so this is one of the other tools uh, you can use for for analyzing such things and have a look at at the the performance of a program and what happens actually. So um, 
I hope this was informative. Um, thanks for watching.